Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the definition of the definite integral and also this certain type of multiple choice question that occasionally shows up in AP Calculus. But before we go in and start talking about, you know, the definition of the definite integral or whatever, I just want to remind you of kind of our general theory of integration, which is that, you know, to get the exact value of the area under the graph of f between x equals a and x equals b, which we call the integral from a to b of f of x dx, what we did was we kind of chopped up the interval, the x-axis between a and b, up into some really small pieces and took you know, some areas of some rectangles that were really skinny and added them all up together, right? So, and to look at this closely, this had height f of x and width delta x, and just to look at that rectangle more closely, and then our integral, we approximated it using a sum of areas of rectangles, which was height is width, right? It was f of x, times delta x that we were adding together. And then in the limiting case, as the number of rectangles went towards infinity and their respective went towards, went towards zero, this became the integral from a to b of f of x dx. But we never really talked so much about the actual mechanics of that limiting process. That's what I'm telling you about today. Now, if you're in my calculus class and you go back and you look through your notes books that I give you, you'll see the definition of the definite integral right there as I've written it. But I frequently skip over that when I'm, you know, first instructing on how to take an integral because at that point in a calculus class, as a first-time calculus student, you're really just trying to keep your head above water, learn how to do these things. It's all very different. And so I don't really go too deep into the theory of it. I like to loop back around at a time like this and tell you about it. So remember, it's the limit as the norm of the partition goes to zero of the Riemann sum. And the norm of the partition is the width of the widest rectangle. So if the width of the widest rectangle is going towards zero, then it's necessarily going to be the case that the number of rectangles goes towards infinity. So what we're going to see here is actually going to be the limit as n approaches infinity on these multiple choice questions. Okay? But it will still be the sum as some index runs from 1 up to n of areas of rectangles given by height multiplied by width. Now, what I, you see in light blue over there, we're going to assume the interval is equally subdivided, which means that delta xi is just always going to be the same b minus a over n. And by b minus a, I mean this a and that b, right? Okay, so that's going to be a really good tool for us to knock off answer choices, right? I'm going to say that up here, it's going to be b minus a going in there. And maybe I can fit it, squeeze it in real small. No, I'm not going to be able to. I'll just go down here. The thing that needs to go in that first box is going to be f of x sub i. Now, like it says over there in orange, this is the part where the confusion can occur. So I'm just going to tell you right now what x i is, and then hopefully as we do some examples, it'll make more sense. Where x i starts at... Right, x i starts at a and then adds basically delta x times i. Where i is like the index of the sum, not the square root of negative 1. But we already know that delta x is equal to b minus a over n, so I'm going to actually write it like that. And I'm going to just leave that there, and we'll be able to kind of reconcile this with what we're looking at here in a second. All right, so I'm going to bring in a quick example, and this one's from the AP Calculus course description, so you know that this is a topic that's eligible to be tested on. It doesn't seem like it uh, comes up all that often, but we got to be ready for anything, right? I would not feel good about myself if I didn't show you about all the different problems, problem types that you might face on the AP exam. So what we're going to do, the first way that we're going to knock off the answer choices is by looking over here. If we're integrating from 2 up to 6, well, then that means that b minus a is 4. So I need to be looking for something that's got a 4 over n multiplied by, you know, the square root of some stuff. Really, it's going to be the square root of xi, right? And then there's going to be a sum to the left of that, of that. But based on this 4 over n, I know I'm going to be able to knock off these two answer choices. And if we can knock off two out of four answer choices, we're giving ourselves a good chance, right? Even if we don't know anything else, if we can just eliminate two bad choices, we're, we're doing really good. But then I need to distinguish between A and C. 
So that's where I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually plug in on XI. Okay? I told you that XI, it starts with a lower bound of integration. If we're starting integrating from 2, that would be 2 plus B minus A over N is that same thing that's over here. That's 4 over N times I. And, okay, they're using K as their index in this multiple choice question. But we know that, you know, it doesn't matter what index we use. It's, it's kind of all the same. So I know it's going to be this one. Okay. But I'll go in and I'll kind of describe what the ones that are wrong, which integral they're describing. Because these are limits of Riemann sums. These are describing somebody's definite integral out there. It's just not ours right here. Okay. So this first one, this has a width of 4. The region of integration does have a width of 4, but it didn't have that 2 right in there. So I think that just would mean that we were integrating from 0 to 4 on the square root of x dx. The second one, it has a width of 6, and it probably starts at 0, so I'm going to say integral from 0 to 6 of square root of x dx. And then this last one, it has a width of 6, but it starts at 2, so I think that's going to be the integral from 2 to 8 of the square root of x dx. And this is a very typical example of this type of problem. Okay? We've got a definite integral. Which of these limits of the Riemann sums is it? And honestly, I encourage you to solve these problems by process of elimination. Knock off bad answer choices because they've got something wrong. Now let's construct one ourselves. Okay? Now this is not realistic. I, I really don't think that this would show up on the AP calculus exam anywhere besides multiple choice. But, you know, I feel like if we can come up with our own, then we would really definitely be able to choose the right one in a multiple choice setting. So well, let's, let's do one of these. So I know that integrating 5x to the 6 dx as a limit of Riemann sum is going to start off with the limit as n approaches infinity. And then it's going to be the limit of the sum as i runs from 0 or from 1. The difference between starting your series at 0 and starting at 1 is the difference between a left and right Riemann sum. And we're going to use n rectangles. And we want to take the limit as the number of rectangles goes towards infinity, right? And so the height of each rectangle will be 5 times some number to the 6th. Okay, I'm going to just put a placeholder in xi for now, and then I'll just go in and figure out what that's going to be in a little bit. And then I'll be multiplying by b minus a over n. Well, if I'm integrating from 3 to 4, that will be 4 minus 3 over n. Okay. And then xi, it, well, it starts with 3 plus 1 over n times i, right? b minus a over n times i. Okay, and that's us writing that integral as the limit of a Riemann sum. Okay, now these limits actually can be computed. You just need certain formulas about the sums of squares, or in this case, the sums of sixth powers and things. And I'm not going to go into that. If you're interested, I've actually got an example of me working one of those type of problems. I forgot I'd done that last year. But if you're interested, I might just link that video right up there. Okay, if you're interested in actually seeing us compute one of those limits. I'll warn you, though, it's not that fun. Okay, now, the last thing I've got for you is something I'd intended to show you at the beginning of this video. But, you know, I figured better late than never. I've got, I'm up on a GeoGebra window. This is not my GeoGebra lesson. This is some other probably better calculus teacher out there. He has cooked this thing up. And what do we do when we integrate? Well, we're taking the limit of the Riemann sum, right? But I really like this because it's got a slider. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Let's just slide the slider up. Okay, right now I'm at 26 rectangles. That's a pretty wide interval. We still, we still got some error, right? But as I slide it forward and really increase the number of rectangles, the error goes down by a lot. And in the limiting cases, I let n go to infinity, which 300 might as well be infinity, right? I can see that there's pretty much no error. And so, like it says, as n goes to infinity, the sum of the areas of the rectangles equals the area under the curve, which we know is the definite integral. Now, I think that's about all I got for you in this video. If you feel like you need some practice, I've got a really good worksheet on this. And I think I'm going to link that in the description. But I'm also going to record myself working through that worksheet. And, you know, I might just link that up at the top, too. No, 
I think I've said all I've got to say about this topic, so I'm just going to tell you, thanks for watching.